anthropology optional anthropology as an optional i'll tell you a few facts with respect to anthropology optional in terms of success we shall go to into the syllabus part later first of all have anyone tried anthropology means any rankers have they tried anthropology or not first thing because kisi aur ko is option se thoda acha rank aaya so we can also try so coming to the factual information with respect to the uh, success rate in anthropology we have uh, every year there will be a top in top 10 we have at least one or two ranks from anthropology every year one to two ranks in anthropology so it produced toppers consistently it produced toppers consistently not only toppers not only toppers because everyone cannot get a top rank everyone cannot get a top rank theek hai so if you take the entire list if you take the entire list every year anthropology contributes at least 10% of the candidates at least 10% of the candidates anthropology is a contributing theek hai so people have tried people have tried and they are successful and the fact is irrespective of the background irrespective of the background if you take the success rate of 10% or every year toppers if you take their background none of them are from biology background or anthropology background in most of the cases they come from varied backgrounds they come from uh, engineering background they come from commerce background they come from arts background so here background uh, anthropology need not have the students who are uh, aspirants who are taking anthropology as an optional they need not have any particular background because the result is evident the result is very clear here so anyone can take anthropology anyone can take anthropology so any apprehensions with respect to this no top one top one top two top three every year every year so anthropology is the safest option the first option and the interesting thing is interesting thing is generally students aspirants will be taking an optional they try with that optional for some time and they calculate the success rate and they try to change the optional some of the cases yes or no yes or no no luckily the people who have changed the optional say for example option x they tried i don't want to tell the particular option option x they have taken they tried and tested for 2 years then they have come to the conclusion that it is not going to happen this is not going to happen and they have searched for other options to change change yes or no they have changed the optional in majority of the cases they have shifted to anthropology I don't want to tell the names of that AR one or AR two or AR three, AR three, ठीक है? But these people they have shifted their optional subject. After shifting the optional subject, they scored very good rank, very good rank. AR one, I don't tell the name. Just your you people are very good at browsing about the topics. Air one, etc., etc. Here, air two, air three. So, despite changing, after changing the option, they top of this exam. After changing this op, their respective options, okay, they top of this exam. How anthropology contributed? probably just by taking changing the optional subject just by changing the optional subject is its weightage is only 500 marks yes or no just by changing the option and answering in a better way 500 marks will not fetch you a better rank will not give you a good rank yes or no all of a sudden you were scoring some 200 210 in a particular option and consistently some uh, what say for example some 400 or odd marks in general studies in general studies they may not get an interview call 
yes or no after changing anthropology after changing anthropology into anthropology their marks might have increased by 80 or 90 marks say for example if they are in 210 their score might have increased to 300 so increase of 90 marks does not fetch you air or one or increase of 120 marks will not fetch you air one so what happened was the anthropological perspective the anthropological perspective the areas covered in the anthropology the syllabus covered in the anthropology helped them even in the general studies part have you got it yes or no so after shifting to anthropology the anthropological outlook the anthropological approach helped them to improvise their score even in the general studies part because the approach the holistic approach what we follow in anthropology holistic approach what we follow in anthropology will help you a lot in your general studies paper why because UPSC expects aspirants having holistic understanding not a narrow view or a parochial view but a complete view a holistic view yes or no so do we need such officers for the country who are having a holistic understanding or a narrow or parochial understanding holistic understanding so this holistic understanding of the subjects enables you to write holistic answers even in general studies part even in general studies part be it governance be it ethics especially essay especially essay essay should be written not not only essay every all the aspects should be written in holistic form yes or no essay is a place essay is a place where you have an opportunity to reflect your ideas in a holistic way yes or no because that is for that is for 125 marks each you have the option of writing around 1000 to 1500 words you have the option of writing around 1000 to 1500 words your ideas can be better reflected in the essay so your ideas means the holistic understanding about an issue can be better reflected in the essay yes or no yes or no if it is for 10 marker we may not have the opportunity to present a holistic view or depending upon the question also if it's a factual question it's a factual question what is there to write in a holistic way yes or no so essay is a place essay is a place where you can present your views holistically means a proper understanding a sequential presentation is possible again counter check the anthropology topper marks and their essay marks their essay score will be very high it helps you a lot in writing a better essay it helps you a lot in writing a better essay you just compare the anthropology topper marks the people who scored and uh, topped with anthropology just compare their essay marks also their essay marks also will be very good even ethics marks will also be very 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 good taking anthropology as an optional taking anthropology as an optional it helps you in society of paper one and also history of paper one it helps you in governance paper governance paper indian constitution governance social justice here there we discuss about people there we discuss about poverty we discuss about self help groups we discuss about development we discuss about many things so such topics do they need holistic understanding or a peripheral understanding holistic understanding so anthropology anthropology approach is a holistic approach so such the perspective is what we develop in anthropology that will help you in governance part these are directly these are directly covered society is covered directly directly 
So you did not uh, refer to other books or other sources for paper one society. It's part of our anthropology. It's part of our anthropology. History is covered, especially the ancient part of the ancient India is covered. Yes or no? Most parts of the culture also covered. Culture also covered. I'll explain you the syllabus. I'll explain you the anthropology syllabus, uh, how it is related to the general studies papers. General studies papers. Okay. So it covers the governance part. It covers ethics part. It covers a uh, ethics part. And most importantly, the best part is the S. The best part is S. These are the advantages of taking anthropology as an optional. These areas will be covered in the mains if you take anthropology as an optional. Additionally, we have uh, science and technology, especially the biology part in preliminary examination. In a preliminary examination, we have biology and uh, science and technology part. As part of science and technology, we have biology. So, S and T of the prelims. S and T of uh, prelims. Okay. So, it helps you in prelims, S and T part. And these parts are covered. Society, history, governance, ethics, essay. You just compare the marks of the people who have taken anthropology as an optional and you compare the marks scored by these people in these papers. And let me know. And uh, let me know. So taking anthropology as an optional, taking anthropology as an optional, it helps you in other parts of the general studies. It helps you in improvising your score in all the papers. Okay. Now, coming to the optional part. Anthropology as an optional, how scoring it is? How comfortable it is? How comfortable it is for an aspirant? So, time and again, I will not repeat again again. Irrespective of the background, irrespective of the background, it's suitable to everyone. It's suitable to everyone. Take now. Anthropology syllabus can be covered in uh, three to four months. Anthropology syllabus can be covered in three to four months. Anthropology syllabus you need not update on a regular basis. No current affairs. This is the best part. This is the best part of anthropology. No current affairs. Why? Because there are some optionals where they are partly aligned with current affairs. They are partly aligned with the current affairs. Now, if you prepare current affairs for this year, they may not they may not be relevant for the next year. They may not be relevant for the next year. Say, for example, you prepared for 2021. The current affairs what you have gathered in 2021 may not be helpful for 2023. Yes or no? May not be in most of the cases. Anthropology does not have current affairs part. You need not update. Means the effort what you have made for 2021. 2021 will definitely get 100%, the 100%, the effort what you have made, you can uh, use it 100% for 2022. I have spent on this, I have spent on this, now these are, again I have to update, it is not like that in anthropology. That is why people take anthropology as an optional. So, that the current affairs part is not there. Current affairs part is not there. So, syllabus can be covered in 3 to 4 months. Syllabus can be covered in 3 to 4 months. There is no current affairs part. That is why people shift to anthropology. The people who are who want to shift their optional, say from sociology 
to anthropology or psychology to anthropology, geography to anthropology. They take it, they shift it, within three months they prepare, they write the exam and they top the exam or a respectable, uh, what is that, a rank, a good rank. Why because that syllabus is like that, the syllabus is like that. Now, I will explain you about the syllabus, I will explain you about the syllabus. Okay. So, before going to, into the syllabus, before going into the syllabus, I will tell you what are the components of anthropology, how the subject is interesting. Now, for UPSC aspirant or for any examination, the aspirant should have interest in the subject then only he can excel, yes or no? Now, is anthropology interesting? Anthropology, look at the term anthropology, term is very boring, anthropology, mathematics, economics, terms appear to be interesting, okay. Is anthropology interesting? This is the biggest question. Is it interesting? It is not only interesting, it is wonderful. It is a not only interesting, it is a wonderful. So, indeed it is interesting. Indeed it is interesting. You will be watching movies. You will be watching movies. Rodin movies. Some fascinating movies science fiction movies, you get more attracted. Why? Because the areas dealt there, the technology what they use will be much fascinating. Yes or no? Much be much, uh, it will be fascinating. Anthropology as a subject is very interesting, very interesting. Why? I will tell you. In the syllabus of anthropology with respect to UPS examination, I am peripherally dividing what exactly are the components, what exactly are the components. First part we have man, the evolution of man, the adaptation of man, adaptation of man and something related to the progress of man, something related to the progress of man. Here we discuss about diseases, evolution, many things, progress about man. Anthropology as a subject is nothing but the study of man. So who is the hero in our subject? Anthropology, who is the hero? You, me. Learning about ourselves, knowing about ourselves. Do you wish to know about yourself? About your ancestors? Is it fascinating or not? Yes. Do you want if you want to trace your lineage, your dada, usepele, usepele, etc., etc. How they live, what they have eaten, how they were physically, how they have evolved. Is it interesting or not? Is it interesting or not? Definitely yes. Definitely yes. What cultures they have followed? what foods they have eaten, how they have evolved, interesting? That part is paper one part, paper one section A part. Here we discuss about the physical anthropology or the biological anthropology. Here we discuss about the physical anthropology as a or biological anthropology. If you view it as a biology, it may not be that interesting. If you view it as a subject about ourselves, about our evolution, about our evolution, then subject will be more interesting. Do you wish to know about your ancestors, how we have lived, how we have evolved? Yes, that interest, if we have that interest, this part will be very, 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 very interesting. Okay. And in second part, second part of our paper one, it is about the culture. 
culture. What is culture? What is culture? Indian culture, American culture, Chinese culture. Culture is a complex whole. That's what you hear. The ornaments, what you people are using. The food pattern, the cuisine. The marriage practices. Family, organization. The kinship organization, how our kinship is organized. The political systems, the religious aspects. The economic aspects, all these are part of culture. Here as a part of cultural studies, we will be studying cultures of different societies. We study about the marriage practices. What is the marriage practice prevalent in India? I mean, uh, as a part of uh, marriage payments. In India, do you have a dowry or a bride race? dowry we have. But there are certain societies where you have bride price. In return, you people will get girls. Very interesting. Is it interesting to know or not? Yes. To know about such societies? Yes. It is interesting. But the thing is, why? Why such practice in that society is bride price in such societies? Why dowry in India? Is the question. means we are you we are viewing an issue from the core why a particular practice means the way we are uh, viewing the subject this can be applied even with respect to the the institutions what we follow in india why inequality why casteism why communalism why ethnicity because we have to go into the root of the problem. As administrators in future, you have to go into the root of the problem, not crushing the problem or wiping the problem with iron hand. We have to go into the root of the problem and we have to give a feasible, a sustainable solution. Yes or no? Yes or no? So such perspectives will be used in administration. Because we will be studying different cultures. We study about the marriage practices. We study about the family. We study about the kinship. We study about the economic organization. We study about the political organization. We study about the religious dimensions of not only a particular society, of varied societies of the world. And we go for cross-cultural comparison. Why in such cultures, it is marriage practices like that. Why in a particular culture religious practices are like this? And we compare it. Even India is a land of diversity. It's not that we have we are having only the major religions. We are having the major religions. People practice only the major religions. It's not that people practice only Hinduism, Islam or Christianity or Buddhism and Jainism. There are very minor, very, very, uh, there are religions there are many religions followed by minority of the people which are basically mostly regional in nature. Say for example, you are posted in that particular district or a particular area. People are different, their religious practices are different. How are you going to understand them and how are you going to solve their problems? So if you properly study the different cultures, I mean the cultural perspectives, the holistic way of understanding things. The holistic way of uh, understanding the things, be it is marriage practices, family, kinship, economic, political, religious organizations. And almost all the aspects are interrelated. Almost all the aspects are interrelated. Is in any way, is any, anyhow, any, uh, economic system, is it anyhow, any way related to the political system? Economic system, is it any way related to the political system? How? Example? Say for example, we have a pastoral society. Their economy is pastoralism. Their economy is pastoralism. Under such, what type of political systems can be expected? A state? A chiefdom? 
or a band. It's a band. Yes or no? Yes or no? Why? Because there are, they are wanderers. How can, you how can you expect them to establish a state? Are you able to follow? So, economic system is related to the political systems. All the institutions, all the aspects of the culture are interrelated. Say for example, if you become an IAS officer, you are posted in a particular area, you want to improvise that area. If you study all these aspects and how they are interrelated, you can give better solutions. So here what we do is, we study not only a particular, an individual culture with respect to these institutions. We study numerous societies. We take the case studies, the particular X society, particular Y society, particular Z society and we compare, cross-cultural comparison. So this cross-cultural comparison is a hallmark of an approach. Okay. Now there are certain diet, dietary practices. Dietary practices. Some people we may shun some practices and some people they follow only that dietary practices. So should we shun or should we should we go into their lens and view it? Yeah, we have to go into their lens and view it. Then only we can proper understand. So rather than blindly telling or avoiding, it's better you observe it from their perspective. So such a perspectives will be developed only with the help of the cultural studies. Is it interesting? Is it interesting? Definitely. Definitely. So knowing about ourselves, knowing about ourselves, our ancestors, their culturals, is it interesting? Yes. Cultural studies, marriage, family, kinship, economic organization, political organization of different societies. Is it interesting? Yes, it's interesting. This is paper one. This is paper one. And in paper one, the most important aspect is the uh, cultural theories or anthropological theories. Cultural theories or anthropological theories. We have different schools there. We have evolutionary school, means culture. Some people tell that culture evolved. There is diffusion school. They tell that culture develops at a particular place and it diffuses. We have historical particularism. That is, every culture is unique according to Franz Boas. We have structuralism. We have functionalism. We have structural functionalism. Cultural materialism of Harris. Cultural materialism of Harris. Culture and personality school. Culture and personality school. Your personality your, is molded by your function. Cultural and personality school. We have postmodernism. Beautiful theories. Beautiful theories. Very, very, very interesting. This is paper one. This is paper one. Is the subject interesting? Is the subject interesting? Anywhere boring? No. No way. No way. Okay. And next is the paper 2. Next is the paper 2. Paper 2 I divide into two components. One is the Indian, Indian, uh, Indian culture and the society. Next is the tribal India. Indian culture and the society. How Indian culture evolved? Right from the Stone Ages, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic cultures, Indus Valley Civilization, the Iron Ages, everything we discuss. Everything we discuss here. Okay. Next we have about the studies about the Indian society different institutions in the Indian society. I'll just open the syllabus part, the slide and show it to you. You're also having the syllabus booklets in your hand. Just look at there or else you can look here also. 
evolution of Indian culture and civilization, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic cultures, pre-Harappan, Harappan, post-Harappan cultures, contribution of tribal cultures to Indian civilization. Did they? Contribution of tribal cultures to Indian civilization. Now we, we view tribes as a, in a different perspective, in constitutional sense it is scheduled tribe. But all of you who are sitting here, they are a part of a tribe. Tribe is not a scheduled tribe, a tribe, means a group, a group. Aryans were a tribe, Harpans were a tribe, Harpans were a tribe, means who share certain characteristics. So how these tribal cultures have contributed for the Indian civilization? Interesting? Boring? Interesting? Yes, indeed they are interesting. Now, I told you about the evolution of man in paper 1, in a paper 1, means man originally from Africa, he spread to different parts of the world, you might be have read somewhere, yes or no? So is there any man, a primitive man living in India, in the subcontinent, in the subcontinent, we have evidences of anthropological evidences with special reference to Shivalik and Narmada man. We have the Rama Pithikas, Shiva Pithikas, Narmada man. They share some characteristics. They are not homo sapiens. They are not homo sapiens like you and me. They are different. They have lived on the, they have lived on the Indian subcontinent. Are you interested to know? Are you interested to know? Yes. India our land, the people who lived in on our land from ages, how they have evolved, it is interesting. What do you say? Yes, madam. Interesting. Do you wish to know? Yes. Now, where is the subject boring? This is concept of ethno-archaeology, ethno-archaeology, concept of survivals and parallels. Survivals and parallels, what is survival? What is survival? Survival, a cultural, a, a cultural element, even though we are not practicing it in its fullest form, but we continue that. If anyone sees us, Hach, kya bolte? Jite raho, long live. God bless you. Is it having any relevance? Meto, every day it sneezes 10 times. 10 times people will come and tell me, God bless you. So God is blessing me 10 times. Is it like that? But still be practice. But still be practice. Even though it is not having any utility, it may have utility or it may not have utility. The survivals, parallels, means the similar elements. Aapka culture mein aisa hota hai? Aray, humara culture mein aisa hota hai? Aapke humara shadi kab hoti hai? Raat mein hoti hai, dina hoti hai? Raat mein hoti hai. Aray, humara yaha bhi raat mein hoti hai. Is a parallel. Is a parallel. Yes or no? Now, yaha north mein to shadi kab hoti hai? Raat mein? Din mein? No, south mein, morning, din mein, haan, aur kya? Cross cultural comparison. Is it interesting to know, do you wish to know why North India, why South India marriage in the day? Yes or no? So it's cross cultural comparison. So all the elements we compare like that, religion, society, marriage, family, everything. Okay, that is uh, ethno archaeology. And this is, and the remaining aspects of paper 2 are very simple, very simple. We have demographic profile in, of India, ethnic and linguistic elements and the factors uh, which influence the structure and growth of the Indian population, direct, direct. Next element is the traditional social system, traditional social system. I told you sir, it, it will be helping you in your ethics, it will be helping you in your essay, essay, especially these elements. Indian traditional basis of the 
Indian social system. Varnasrama. Varnasrama. In every stage of your life, in every stage of your life, you have certain duties to perform. Yes or no? As a student, there are certain duties. As a householder, you have certain duties. As an old man, you have certain duties. As a student, what is your, your duty? Study only. Yes or no? Means such aspects, the duties aspects according to the Indian tradition. The Varna, oh sorry, the Purushartha. The Purushartha. Karma, fate. Rina, indebtedness. We are, are we indebted to our parents? Gurus? Yes. That is the, we are indebted. We have certain Rinas that have to be what fulfilled. Indian society, traditionally we follow this. Such elements are discussed here. Next comes the interesting aspect, the caste system, of which we are part and parcel of. Caste system, structure, characteristics of Varna and caste, theories of origin of caste system, dominant caste, caste mobility, future of caste system, how it is going to be in the future. How it is going to be in the future, I have a question for you. Will caste system continue or it will uh, what, dilute? Will it be rigid or it will be diluted or it will be perished? She is telling perish. You are telling diluted. Let us discuss this. Why it will dilute? Why it will go perish? How it is going to be in the future? In the academicians, a few academicians have worked on this topic and they have given their own perspectives on the future of the caste system in India. How it is going to be? Such perspectives will be discussed. Interesting? Interesting? Yes. Anything complex? No. We are part and parcel of all this. Varnasrama, anything complex? Or are we part and parcel? Caste system? Part and parcel? Next, we have a concept called a sacred complex and nature mind spirit complex developed by L.P. Vidyardi. That's an interesting concept. I'll explain you. Next, impact of Buddhism, Jainism, Islam, and Christianity on Indian society. Sir, Buddhism. Kya hota impact? Jainism, kya hota impact? Hinduism, sorry, Islam and Christianity and Indian society. Have they impacted Indian society? Have they? How come? We shall discuss how Islam has influenced. Be it in dressing pattern or cuisine or the values or ethics. Buddhism. What is Buddhism? Buddhism is, is about ethics. What is Jainism? Ethics. Every religion has ethical elements. Every element has its own, what is it, peculiar features. People have shifted to Islam, people have shifted to Buddhism, Buddhism people have shifted to Jainism. Why? Why? Because it's, it has its own peculiar elements. Now, these religions, did they influence the Indian society? Yeah, we are a cosmopolitan society. We are unity and diversity. We are unity and diversity. How these religions have impacted the Indian society? How these uh, religions have impacted the Indian society? Next, we have the development of the discipline. Contributions of 18th century, 19th century, and 20th century scholar administrators. Contribution of Indian anthropologists to the tribal studies and the caste studies. 18th century means 1720, 1730, 19th century, 1800s, 20th century, scholar, administrators, means the British personnel, the British officers have contributed a lot for the development of anthropology in India. The development of anthropology in India. They are the people who started the census. They were the people who started studying the ethnic elements. You have a gentleman by name Herbert Risley. Risley is the classification of Indian races. It is a Herbert Risley who classified the Indian people into different, different races. So stuff like that will be discussed here. Stuff like that will be discussed here. Contribution of Indian anthropologists, Indian village. 
हम सब गांव से इफ नॉट वी अवर एंसेस्टर्स वी फ्रीक्वेंटली विजिट द विलेजेस इज एर एनी नीड फॉर स्टडिंग द विलेजेस यस इज इट रेलिवेंट टू योर एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन यू बिकम आई एस स्टे इन लंडन नो यू स्टे इन पर्टिकुलर डिस्ट्रिक्ट यू बी पोस्ट इन पर्टिकुलर डिस्ट्रिक्ट सो विल यू विल यू सिटी ओनली इन द हेड क्वार्टर्स और विल यू वॉट इज दट दौरा करते पूरा जिला यू टेक टूर ऑफ द एंटायर डिस्ट्रिक्ट बिकॉज इट इज द विलेजेस इट्स द विलेज वेयर मेजोरिटी ऑफ द पीपल इंडिया रिसाइड सो दे हैव टू बी स्टडीड इंडियन विलेजेस हैव टू बी स्टडीड इन अ प्रॉपर वे सो हियर द टॉपिक इज सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ विलेज स्टडी इन इंडिया इंडियन विलेज एज ए सोशल सिस्टम इज अ सोशल सिस्टम यस Indian village, social system, traditional and settlement, changing settlement patterns, traditional and settlement pattern. You see in villages how it will be. Settlement patterns, houses. One village end hota, uske baad dusra village start hota. What is the distinguishing? What distinguishes one village from another? What was the, will there any barrier? How the boundaries are set up? You might have studied this in geography also. Settlement patterns. there will be some a distinguished mark be a mountain or a pass or a small talab whatever it may be so us taraf that village this taraf this village even in villages also the settlement pattern settlement pattern settlement patterns in villages they will be basically on caste lines the particular caste will be in one one part of the area one part of the village and another, another uh, community will be in another part of the villages traditionally Yes or no? Now the traditional patterns are they changing? Yeah. Yes, because village is expanding. Village is expanding. New colonies are springing up, especially in the outskirts of the village. Now there also are they following the rigid caste lines or to an extent flexible? To an extent flexible. So settlement patterns are changed. Settlement patterns are changed. So that is how we study. Inter caste relations are also changed. The way we interact. Caste system was very rigid. now it's become it's getting diluted so the inter caste relations are changing the jajwani system the jajwani system is no more uh, relevant in the indian society in the indian villages because not not relevant in the sense it's getting diluted it's getting diluted so all these aspects will be uh, studied agrarian relations in the indian villages globalization impact of globalization on the indian villages is are indian villages uh, are indian villages are the impact of globalization how globalization is impacting how how the the produce what we produce the agriculture produce based on the global demand the dietary patterns global demand yes or no wherever you go our network follows you will get airtel signal everywhere do you no but you will get kindly water everywhere you will get thumbs up everywhere even though you don't get a phone signal you get a thumbs up sir signal nahi mil raha thanda pilo so even i'm telling one element i'm just telling a one element of globalization so this multinational corporation they have spread to the deepest areas so we we will be studying this in a multi dimensional perspective the impact of globalization on the indian villages theek hai interesting is it interesting now linguistic and religious minorities linguistic and religious minorities their political problem social pattern economic status very simple topic similarly we have indigenous and exogenous process of social cultural change in the indian society is there a change in the indian society so what indigenous factors have contributed what exogenous factors have contributed transplantation westernization modernization now indian society changing look at my grandfather used to wear white kapda and a dhoti white shirt and a dhoti now i look at you you are more modern than me impact of so is there a change in the indian society with respect to with respect to dressing pattern another impact of
so westernization is evil yes the modernity modernity aspects what we have imbibed now is also because of the western rational education so there is a pros and cons pros and cons holistic perspective is the hallmark of anthropology i said if you have such a holistic understanding you can write better essays i said yes or no how this westernization has impacted how sensation has impacted how these factors have contributed to the social change in india liberal western education or english education have contributed for the empowerment of the weaker sections especially under the christian missionaries yes or yes or no yes so have they contributed so there are exogenous factors and endogenous factors which have contributed to the social change is the subject interesting or boring because i am not able to what is it measure the proper reaction means you are into trance theek <laughs> hai next this is about the indian society part what i told you what i told you we have two components one is the indian society part next is the tribal part so is the indian society part interesting is it interesting yes it is interesting why because we are part and parcel of indian society social change we are experiencing caste system change we are experiencing impact of buddhism jainism christianity we are experiencing everything we are experiencing we are part and parcel of these aspects yes or no so will the subject be interesting will the subject be interesting definitely yes definitely yes and one more thing is you are part and parcel of this you experience all these aspects if at all there is a question on it can you write it matlab with your basic knowledge of the basic observation what you are making can you manage the question can you manage the question you can manage because we are part and parcel of it we observe the surroundings around us so based on our own knowledge we can manage the question if not writing a perfect answer at least we can manage the question and we can score some optimum marks 40% 40% for 10 if write in a better way 50% if write it very good 60% is also possible if write it the best 70% i know a person who scored 350 and one more girl she topped with 360 360 marks in anthropology not all the gs papers 360 marks in anthropology because they have given their best they have combined the theory part and the practice the theory part they have applied to the society what is happening and they wrote that answers in that particular way so i'll tell you though how to present an answer how to present an answer theek okay. hai next part is the tribal part tribal part tribals are the poorest among the poor in india as a part of uh, anthropology syllabus in paper 2 we have the tribal india or the tribal situation in india so the biogenetic variability biogenetic variability even for indian fact india also population studies also we had another topic right demographic profile of india ethnic and linguistic elements ethnic and linguistic elements we have biogenetic variability that is the ethnic element we have the ethnic element so we have different different tribes in north east we have tribes in punjab haryana region in sorry in uh, rajasthan region we have tribes gujarat rajasthan belt we have tribes in central india we have tribes in south india we have tribes yes or no are they homogeneous with respect to the racial features are they homogeneous with respect to the racial features the tribes of kerala are they having similarities with uh, the central indian tribes are central indian, central indian tribes having similarity with the northeastern tribes no they are not homogeneous they are not homogeneous be it racially be it racially or be it culturally yes or no 
Yes or no? So this we study about the biogenetic variability, the linguistic and social economic characteristics of a tribal populations. Now the paper two will be mainly focusing on the tribal problems. They will be focusing on the tribal problems. So tribal problems of the tribal communities, land alienation, poverty, indebtedness, low literacy, lack of educational facilities, unemployment, all these are the problems faced by the tribals. Even entire Indian society faces these tribe problems, but they experience it at a higher level. So paper two will be completely focusing on the tribal problem, most of the aspects and the solutions. What has to be done? What has to be done for their upliftment? Problems of uh, developmental project and displacement. If you take up any project, an industrial project has, will, will come up or a, a dam will come up in a tribal area, they will be displaced to other areas. Are there any problems in such displacement? Yes. Imagine if you are just thrown out of, a, uh, out of your region, say for example, you are residing in Lucknow for ages, for five or six ages, all of a sudden a, a project has come, all the people of Lucknow were asked to leave the place. Can you tolerate? Economically, your economic sustenance may be lost. Yes or no? And houses will be lost. And do you have love for your town? Emotional aspect, psychological aspect. All of a sudden, you are you are thrown from uh, you Lucknow to some uh, what Jaffna in Sri Lanka. <laughs> How it will be? So the different perspectives, the political perspectives, the religious perspectives, the psychological perspectives, the emotional aspects, the economic aspects of such displacement, the problems, all these will be discussed here. Next, problem of exploitation, of exploitation and deprivation of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. So the scheduled caste, the scheduled tribes, other backward classes, the problems of their exploitation and deprivation, where lies the problem? And we also have constitutional safeguards for these uh, societies, for protecting these societies. So that aspect will be discussed here. Social change and the contemporary tribal societies. Social change and the contemporary society, tribal societies. Means if entire Indian society is progressing, the social change is happening, what about the tribal aspect with respect to that social change? That is impact of modern democratic institutions. Say for example, impact of Panchayat Rath institutions on development of the tribes. Developmental programs and welfare measures for the tribals in the weaker sections of India. The problems of their implementation, how successful they are. All these are the things what you are going to do as an administrator tomorrow after getting into IAS. Yes or no? Or do you want to be posted in uh, uh, London? This is where you are going to work, my dear. So it's better to have a proper understanding of the Indian society. It's better to have a proper understanding of the tribals, the poor, the weak, the powerless. Next, the concept of ethnicity, ethnic conflicts, ethnicity. We fight based on race, religion, region. Yes, sir. Do you have these problems? Yes. Concept of ethnicity. Next, impact of Buddhism, Christianity, Islam and other religions on tribal societies. Have they influenced the tribal societies? If you take Central India, we have uh, some tribes following Christianity. Some tribes following Christianity. Northeast India, tribes following Christianity. Means they have Adopted Christianity. Questions will be so beautiful questions. Indigenization of Christianity, of tribals. I can quote a lot of examples where tribals, they follow Christianity, despite following Christianity, they, they continue their age-old religious practices. It's not pure Christianity, what we follow in uh, Rome or elsewhere. They follow Christianity, they have adopted Christianity, despite 
following the Christianity or adopting the Christianity, they continue their old practices. That is indigenization of Christianity amongst the tribes of India. Interesting? Interesting? Yes. It's interesting. I can show you the question. I can show you the question. Next, tribe and nation state. What's a nation state? What's a tribe? A comparative study. Comparative studies. And history of administration of tribal areas. Right from the Britishers. 1935 Act, what has been done? We have scheduled areas. We have tribal areas now. As part of fifth schedule and sixth schedule. Were they present earlier or immediately uh, after the, uh, ju ju just from 1950, we have such concept. We do have that right from the type of Britishers. We have the concept of national parks, the contribution of uh, the Britishers, pre-independence, post-independence, Vernier Elfin, we study about Vernier Elvin, the national park approach, Everything will be studying in those. How this fifth schedule and sixth schedule areas are like this? What is the history of administration of the tribal areas? In history, there, uh, there were questions. So after uh, Santal Rebellion, what has been done? A separate district was created. Separate district was created. There was a question in 2020, I guess, preliminary. After this rebellion, what has been done? It is Ill, uh, means a separate province, a separate territory was created for them. And it is illegal for the tribals to transfer, uh, non-tribals to purchase land from tribals. There was a question, do you remember? Yes. So all this has its history. That is the history of administration of tribal areas. It will be very beautiful. It will be very beautiful. Concept of P. PTGs, primitive PVTGs, actually it is primitive vulnerable tribal group and uh, special program for the development. Role of NGOs in tribal development. Role of NGOs in tribal development. How NGOs contribute to the tribal development? Questions can be anywhere. Role of NGOs in tribal, improving the tribal educational aspects. You become collectors. Most of you are women. Some are boys here. Do you wish in women empowerment? Yes. How NGOs contribute to women empowerment? Role of NGOs in women empowerment. Tribal women empowerment. What can be done? What has been done? What they are doing? What has to be done? We want change. We want development of the Indian society. You people, you people are leading this development path. The IAS or whatever it is, IPS, IRS, everyone has the responsibility of taking the country forward or taking the country on the path of development. So without understanding, without knowing about our country, the society, what are you going to do? Only urbanized, born and brought up in Delhi, no awareness of the Indian society, etc., etc. How are you going to manage a district, a backward district, a tribal a district? So we should have a proper understand. That proper understanding can be possible right from your stage of preparation by taking anthropology as an option. Next thing is role of anthropology in tribal development and rural development. Means how this anthropological approach helps you in tribal development and rural development. How culture, cross cultural comparison. Yes or no? Yes or no? Means with this holistic approach, by cross-cultural studies, by undertaking the cultural studies and cross-cultural comparison, anthropological approach can contribute to tribal development and rural development. 
Yes or no? Yes or no? Now, contribution of anthropology to understanding of the regionalism, communalism, ethnic and political movements. Means this holistic approach of anthropology, this knowledge of anthropology, this understanding of anthropology, how it will help you in understanding the problem of communalism. Now, communalism is, we are facing the problem of communalism now in India. Hatred towards other communities. Partially we are experiencing such uh, instances. Why that is happening? Why that is happening? You ask any person, any person who is having that communal outlook, why you are hating him? He do not have answer because he is, he belongs to particular X community. Why are you hating him? Because he is X community. Means there won't be a proper reason for hating. The thing is, he is he was bred like that. The ideas were imbibed like that. Hate those fellows or hate those communities. Now, as an anthropology and the anthropologist, if you have a holistic approach or understanding about a particular uh, community, you ask him to sit with you and we explain him. Beta, I saw him. Yeah, I saw him. I saw him. I saw him. Can you resolve the problem of communalism? Yes or no? Can you guide him properly? Yes or no? Now, here the, as the, the syllabus part is, the question is, how anthropology is contributing to the understanding of the problem of communalism, regionalism, ethnic conflicts, one community fighting with other community on the basis of land, language, religion. So, do you, if at all there are ethnic conflicts or communal problems, whatever it may be, do you want a temporary solution or a permanent solution? So, how anthropology is, is contributing, that is how anthropological holistic approach contributes for the understanding of the regionalism, communalism, whatever ethnicity and the political movements in India. Anywhere is anywhere the subject is boring. I told you sir, you can write a beautiful essay. You can write beautiful, beautiful essay, did I? Did I tell or not? Yes? I told you. You can write. Yeah. With this understanding, can you write a better essay? Yes? With this understanding, this understanding will help you in governance? Yes. This understanding will help you in ethics? With this understanding, it will help you in understanding the history, society. That is why people score better marks. Not only in anthropology, not only in anthropology, but also other papers of general studies. Taking anthropology as an optional, not only for changing your optional, better score in your optional, but also it aids you a lot in gender studies. I am not criticizing, if you take mathematics as an optional, is anyway any way it is, is it useful to you in general studies part? No, finally it is up to you. If you are very good at mathematics, you take it. You take it. But is it any way useful in improving your GS score? Look at anthropology. Can it contribute to improve your GS score? Yes or no? Yes or no? That is why people take anthropology as an optional. Sir, sab kuch badi hai, bahut badi hai. Sir, questions kaise aate anthropology mein? I told you, I told you, no current affairs. No current affairs. Three to four months. Syllabus we have discussed briefly. Is there any complexity involved or can we complete that in three to four months? Valid? Is the statement valid now? Is it valid? Yes. No current affairs. No current affairs. So, now I will show you uh, the paper of 2021 and 2022. And one more thing, what I forgot to mention here is questions are direct mostly. 
mostly direct questions mostly direct questions no twisting no tongue tongue twisters all the questions are direct i mean most of the questions are direct now let's have a glance of the questions which were asked in 21 and 22 how many questions can be attempted with a basic understanding how many questions for uh, for attempting proper understanding is needed for how for how many questions i am betting you at least you can manage the paper manage the paper in my language in my language managing the paper managing the managing the paper means scoring 250 plus managing the paper means scoring 250 plus managing the paper okay good 300 plus i don't tell good better best to best or excelling best or excelling you can score around 330 or 320 plus now we shall see question paper just by managing the paper 250 marks can they attend attend or not means writing some peripherally aisa, 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 aisa. and writing it in a good way writing in a better or the best possible way or the excellent way we shall check we shall check i'll brief you with respect uh, the 2021 so i am telling you questions are direct questions are direct questions no current affairs no current affairs direct questions no current affairs and direct questions okay now i'll show you the question part Show you the question part. How the questions are framed? Twenty twenty two. This is the UPSC paper, original paper. Twenty twenty two mains anthropology paper one. Anthropology paper one. You people have syllabus in your hands. Syllabus question. Syllabus question. Complexity involved or any complexities involved or the questions direct has to be observed now. Or and the thing is one more thing is can we manage the paper or not? Can we manage the paper or not? Debate between formalist and substantive approach. You check in the economic anthropology, economic anthropology formalist and substantive debate formalist and a substantive debate just give me one minute i'll show you very good formalist and a substantive debate what i told you questions are direct questions are direct Formalist and substantive is debate. Mesolithic rock art in the Indian subcontinent. Evolution of cultures. Evolution of cultures. Direct. Direct. We have this Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic culture even at the global level. We have this Paleolithic, Mesolithic cultures even at the global level. So we study in the world perspective and in paper one, we study in the Indian perspective in paper two. Question direct or confusing? Straightforward. Ratliff Brown's ideas on status, role and institution. Ratliff Brown ideas on status role and the institutions functionalism ratliff brown if you study about ratliff brown question is direct 
question is direct any tongue twister anything complex not at all pedigree analysis in genetic counseling pedigree analysis in genetic counseling that is also as per the syllabus that is also as per the syllabus pedigree analysis direct PR and RR, PR and, and PL. That is research methods in anthropology. Research methods in anthropology. You have it in the syllabus. Indirectly, you'll be having this. Indirectly, you'll be having these research methods in anthropology. Yes. Participatory methods. Participatory. Direct or indirect? Direct. Anthropology is systematic, objective, and holistic study of humankind in all times and places. And I have been shouting for the past one and a half year. Just one and a half hour, the same thing. Yes or no? That is the scope of anthropology. I told you, we discuss about our ancients. We discuss about different cultures. So, irrespective of time, 1000 years or 10,000 years or 20,000 years or 1 lakh years, we study them. Anthropology studies them. Anthropology studies the modern humans. Anthropology studies, that is time perspective, time aspect, time and places. We study American society, Australian society. Tropian Islanders, the Andaman Islanders, the hill tribes of India, the Central Indian tribes, means we are studying different places, irrespective of time and place, sir. irrespective of time and place, yes or no, irrespective of time and place, we study it systematically, objectively and holistically. 20 marker question, if you listen to my shouting like this for the, at least 4 months, that is until the end of the course. Can you write this answer directly? Not take na Primate social organization. Primate social organization. We have a topic called as primate studies. Primate studies. Primate behavior. Under primate behavior, we also discuss about the primate social organization. Primate social organization. Okay. Next. Discuss with suitable examples the typo technical problems in Indian Paleolithic industry with reference to the environmental hypothesis. Paleolithic culture. Study about the Paleolithic culture. I have already shown you. How rules of descent contradicts with the principles of the residents. This we have in kinship studies. Enumerate the evidence of animal domestication in Indian microlithic industry. Indian microlithic industry. Microliths, sto small stone ages. How animal domestication is done. We study in history also this. Right from animal domestication, from the once we started domesticating the animals and settled agriculture, culture has completely changed. Yes or no? There is no need for hunting. You can settle in a particular place. You can settle in a particular place. You can domesticate the animals. Rather than hunting, you can domesticate the animals. You can go for agriculture. You can be in a settled life. So, if you are having settled life, less work, more leisure, what will you do? No work, more leisure. Exercise, painting, yes or no? What is that? Uh, jewelry, etc., etc., etc. What is happening? 
culture is evolving. Yes or no? That's why they have this question. Is it having relevance or not? Is it having relevance or not? Yes. Next is about the Neanderthal man, the classic one and a, uh, what is that, progressive one. Is there any need for distinguishing them or what is the controversy? What is the controversy? I have shown you already the, pay, the Neanderthal man. Show it again. Classical type, progressive type. Neanderthal man, classical type and progressive type. Is there any need for distinguishing between the classical type and progressive type? Direct or indirect? Direct, direct questions. Direct questions. All the questions are direct. All the questions are direct. Any current affairs? No. No, 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 not at all. Classic and Neanderthal. Heth and Carter use anthropometric, anthropometric method for measurements of photographs of individual cases, etc., etc. That is anthropological, anthropometric we have in the syllabus. Discuss the historical and cultural context that led to the superseding of the ethnocentrism and cultural relativism in cultural history. We have a topic called as ethnocentrism and cultural relativism. Means culture should not be viewed from our perspective. That should be viewed from there that the cultural perspective be one among them and uh, you study that culture then all the your apprehensions about that particular culture will be resolved it's not about the apprehensions you get a proper understanding of the cultures yes or no so do we need a proper understanding or peripheral understanding yeah. is ban ke aisa aisa gaadi mein ghum ke jana chahte ho aap log nahi to is ban ke kuch badlav lana chahte ho you want some change. So, if you want some change, you have to be, he should have such approach. Critical exam in the anthropological interpretation is the Kularing, that is economic anthropology. Principles which determine redistribution and exchange. Kula is nothing but redistribution in economic anthropology we have. Because as of now, you may not understand this. But if you enter into the uh, classroom component, slowly you will be understanding uh, the aspects which are given here, means the technical aspects which are given. Principles governing production, distribution, exchange, reciprocity, redistribution and uh, market. In community sustaining and hunting, gathering, etc, 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 etc. So from economic anthropology, we have two, we had two questions today, uh, this year, 2022. One is the formalist and substantive debates, next is the Kularing. Next is the Kularing. So, is anywhere, anywhere is the other questions indirect? If you are thorough with the content, if you are thorough with the syllabus, can you write? You can write. You can write. So, almost all the aspects of the syllabus are like that. Almost all the aspects of the syllabus are like this. Briefly, I will explain you about the paper 2 also. Paper 2 also. Pit dwellers in Kashmir. Pit dwellers in Kashmir. Burzom. Burzo, Varna and Buddhism. Now you are, you, none of you have taken coaching here. Just by your history knowledge, can you write something? Can you? What Buddha's opinion about Varna you can write? Means what you write is not wrong. What you write may not be perfectly correct, but it is not wrong. That is called as managing. In my language, that is called as managing the paper. You write, you'll be writing something relevant, if not wrong. Dharma versus religion. Do you need to prepare for this? What is the meaning of dharma? Dharma. Duty versus religion. Your duty as a son. Your duty as a father. And what is religion really? What is religion? Religion is? Religion is lot of dharmas. 
or dharma is different dharma is different religion is different but religion is having the elements of dharma yes or no it is a duties safeguard for linguistic minorities in india direct question constitutional safeguards westernization modernization we have briefly discussed your dressing pattern etc 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 modernization modernity rationality in outlook westernization language dresses cuisine do you need to prepare or we can can you manage can you can you manage you can manage you can manage you can write it in good way or you can write it in an excellent way yes or no if you write westernization about mn srinivas uh, it's not only about it is also about the ideology it's also about the thought process the morality and the criticisms with respect to them everything if you write that will become an excellent answer if not excellent answer in the first instance can you manage this question can you manage this question yes contribution of ayravati karve to the indian anthropology especially with reference to her literary works ayravati karve she wrote a lot of works on displacement of the tribes displacement of the tribes there is uh, in syllabus we have contribution of indian anthropologist to the understanding of tribal and uh, caste studies do you have do you remember yes or no what is the contribution of ayravati karve with special focus on her literary contribution yes literary contribution narmada man i will only explain you that question caste system critical describe ambedkar's argument on the origin of the caste system that is a part of the theories of the origin of the caste system megalithic tradition in india with special reference to northeast india as per syllabus as per syllabus yes contribution of s e dubey to the indian village studies that is contribution of anthropologist to the tribal and caste studies and indian village also we have next richly contribution of scholar administrators contribution of 18th century 19th century and 20th century scholar ad administrators i told you na Risley he is the first who classified the races in india so describe the methods adopted by risley in classifying in indian people the criticisms against the risley's classification globalization on one hand provided opportunities and on the other hand thrown challenges to the indian villages elaborate impact of globalization on indian villages so every aspect will be having everything will be having both positives and negatives yes or no so what are the opportunities and what are the challenges what are the opportunities opportunities no the thing is we can produce not only to cater to the domestic market but for the international market we can sell our products in the international market advantage of globalization disadvantages disadvantages we may not be competent enough to compete in the at the global level we may not we may not uh, attain the economies of scale if you take the handicrafts it may be more uh, what is it more man hours may be needed so our uh, the prices may not be competitive enough yes or no more imports more imports of food products import is uh, cheaper importing of certain items is cheaper than producing here so government will be importing so they may not get remunerative price they may not get remunerative price yes or no uh, similarly other aspects like diet pattern dressing pattern etc 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 so a normal understanding with normal understanding if not a student of anthropology if not a student of anthropology and an aspirant of upsc can you answer this question can you answer this question you can answer this question you can answer this question okay proto history of gujarat inheritance syllabus prehistory and proto historic cultures 
critically examine indigenization of Christianity. That's what I will, I will discuss. Indigenization of Christianity. If it's a class, I would have explained it in a better way. Any cultural element, what we borrow, will be diluted and will be filtered. We borrowed English from Englishmen, from the British. But our English, is it on par with British English or our English? English, Hindi plus English. Are kam yaar. That is indigenization of English becomes English. Yes or no? Yes or no? Similarly, indigenization of Christianity. How the people who have adopted Christianity, how they have indigenized without losing. Can we lose our Hindi? We speak only English, not English in India. Yes or no? Yes or no? Can we lose our own language? Be it Hindi, Telugu for English? No. We have our own version of English that is Hinglish or Telgish or Tamlish. Yes or no? Benglish. That is indigenization. Even though it appears to be funny for you, appears to be funny for you, you see how it is working. Any institution, if we develop any institution, it will be in its purest form. If we borrow any institution, any element that will be diluted or modified. This is anthropological understanding. This is anthropological understanding. Okay. That is the Indian society part. Indian society part. Now, where is they are clubbing? Irrespective of the categorization, section A and section B, they are clubbing that part and this part. Religion and opportunity and a threat to national integration. Regionalism, your own region, X region, is an opportunity on one hand and a threat to national integrity. How are you going to write? Regionalism is an opportunity. Yes. Yes. It is a desire to develop your region. It is a desire to develop your people. That feeling ignites you. Yes or no? That is the positive aspect. Then what is the negative aspect? Is it a threat? Is it a threat? Yes. That is extreme form. Only my region should develop at the cost of others. That is the extreme form. Yes or no? So for answering such questions, do you need much of subject specialization or can you manage? Manageable. Manageable or not? Manageable. Problems of nomadic issues of tribal agricultural laborers in tribal problems. Issues of tribal agricultural laborers. Can you manage this? What are the issues of Indian agricultural laborers in general? Can be modified? from the tribal lands. Yes or no? Major problems of nomadic and semi-nomadic groups. Partly you can write this answer, partly if not fully, you can manage this answer based on problems of the migrants. Yes or no? Can you correlate nomads, migrants at least to an extent? Can you manage? Can you manage? Sir, anthropology paper to kuch bhi nahi pada sir, time nahi mila, aram se jau, kuch nahi hoga, lik sakte ho tum. Is it valid, the statement, what I said? Yes or no? Yes, it's valid. Austro-Asiatic languages, ethnic and linguistic elements, ethnic and linguistic elements in the syllabus, Austro-Asiatic languages. So, we have different languages, we have Bengali, Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, Sanskrit, how these languages are, have evolved. So we categorize into different, different categories and we discuss about the Austro-Asiatic languages. Direct or indirect? After your first posting, if you are posted in a tribal area, 
you will be posted as uh, project director IDDA, Integrated Tribal Development Areas or Integrated Tribal Development Projects, ITDPs. There is a, in the syllabus we have tribal development, tribal problems and schemes for the development of tribals. We have something called as ITDS or ITDPs. Your first posting will be there, if at all, if you are uh, in a tribal uh, district, tribal state, tribal state. Now objectives of ITDPs, how far they have achieved these objectives? Anything complex? Anything complex? No. Compare the functioning of tribal councils with the Gram Sabha under PESA. Impact of modern democratic institutions on tribals, tribals and social change. So after interaction, after interaction of panchayat to schedule areas, panchayat extension to the schedule areas, how the traditional, traditional tribal councils compare it with the present Gram Sabha. What is Gram Sabha? All the people. Traditional tribal council. All the people are the heads, eldermen. Elderman generally. Now it is more democratizing or less democratizing compared to the traditional council. More democratizing. At least in theory, if not in practice, at least in theory. Can you compare? Can you compare? Yes. What is the big deal in this? Next, how British policies impacted the major resources of the tribals? Tribal administration. Tribal? Administration, history of administration of tribal areas. History of administration of tribal areas, tribal policies, program, plans, programs, and their implementation. And their implementation. How British policies impacted major resources of tribals? Direct or indirect? Discuss Gurye and Vernier Elvin's approach to the tribal populations. I discuss well Elvin National Park approach, Gurie. That is contribution of anthropologists. Contribution of a scholar administration, contribution of anthropologists for understanding of a tribal and caste studies. Gurie, Elvin, approach towards tribal populations. Okay. Discuss issues and solutions related to scheduled caste and scheduled tribe populations in India. Do you need specialization as a UPSC aspirant? You can write this question. Problems of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes in India. You can write. Explain social and religious consequences of contact between tribal and non-tribal populations. We have something called as tribe caste continuum. Tribe caste continuum. Now, if I tell you, there are a lot of tribal uh, religions which get impact, which are under impact of Hinduism. They worship Hindu gods and also worship their traditional tribal deities. And sometimes the traditional tribal deities are incorporated as a part of Hinduism. Yes or no? All these things will be very, I can cite very beautiful examples in the class. Lot of examples, beautiful examples. How social change is happening? So, with that knowledge, with that knowledge, at least if you have the memory of the class, you can manage. Because there will be discussions. I'll cite examples for you. So, with that knowledge, can you manage? If not good and excellent, at least can you manage? Yes. Managing is simple language 250 marks. 250 marks. Compare the nature of tribal movements between North and Central Asia. <coughs> Briefly mention the current status of the existing problem. That is, understanding of anthropological understanding of regionalism, communalism, and ethnic movements. You have in the syllabus. Now they are asking the Northeast and the Central Indian movement. 
northeast and uh, the central India. Nature of tribal movements between northeast and uh, central India. Briefly mentioned the cultural tribal movements, etc. etc. Describe briefly the anthropological perspectives on de of development. What is development? Economic development, growth and development, or anthropological development is different? Anthropological definition is different. You just show your notes to this girl that anthropology development is different. But it's not possible in the class. And anthropology to the rural development. That is the holistic, holistic. We can use the same question paper, morning question paper. Anthropology is, anthropology is systematic, objective and holistic study. Same word can be used here. Anthropology is systematic, objective and holistic study and elaborate data set. Okay, answer. Is it wrong? It will not be perfect, right? It may not be a model answer, but it is not wrong. Yes or no? Yes or no? No. How can you strike a balance between livelihood concern and environmental degradation in context of shifting cultivation? That is the tribal agricultural problems. This is paper 2022. 2022. Now, what is your opinion? Valuable feedback. Tough. Sir, I am not having biology background. Sir, I did only my BCom. Sir, I did only BA. Sir, I am very poor at biology. Are these statements valid? Are these statements valid? No. Irrespective of background. Second aspect is the coverage. In less time you can cover. In less time can you cover? To an extent in paper 2 we have some extent of dynamism in the questions. That also can be managed. But the thing is are there any, any components which are related to current affairs? No. You have completed the syllabus. You have studied the syllabus. At least 60% syllabus you, you finished it, uh, this year. So, that 60% syllabus what you have finished will it be useful for you in next attempt? Or is it futile or waste of uh, resources? Next attempt will be useful. You may score some 260 or 270 this year. Again, with the same resources, some adding some aspect to the existing notes, you can score better marks. But current affairs? Spending resources on current affairs may not be fruitful, may not be relevant. It may be a waste of resources. Yes or no? Yes or no? Now, what is the problem with anthropology? There is no problem with anthropology. That is why the people who are smart enough, they shifted their option to anthropology and they have topped this examination. I am not brainwashing you. It is a fact. The fact, it's a fact, it's evident. We have data, we have information. So, anthropology is the best option for you as an optional. Anthropology as an optional will help you to improvise your score in all the GS papers. That's now the strategy that has to be followed. The strategy that has to be followed. There won't be off late. Off late, there is nothing called as shortcut. Off late, there is nothing called as shortcut. Off late, UPSC is following the strategy that shortcuts should not work. Shortcuts uh, should not work. When I used to prepare way back in 2008 and 10, there used to be certain shortcuts. It's almost 15 years. It's 2023. 
aspirants have shifted from short cuts to shortest cuts. PDF पढ़ लो कुछ बिल्स पढ़ लो कुछ करंट अफेयर्स पे ध्यान दो वी विल फिल्टर एंड वी विल गिव इट टू यू दैट इज अ शॉर्ट कस्ट कर्स अरे जस्ट यू गेस जस्ट बाई फॉलोइंग द शॉर्टेस्ट कर्ट रीडिंग सम पी डी एफ फॉर वन मंथ और टू मंथ विल यू विल यू पी एस सी टॉल रेट सच मेथड्स it will think people are making fun of me yes or no definitely are i was i am expecting the best from the country and these fellows are going for the shortest of the short cuts shortest cuts now i'll show you kya karna hai because upsc is setting the questions now upsc is not deviating from the syllabus it's not deviating from the syllabus it's asking the questions from within the syllabus but the thing is questions are framed in such a way people who look for shortest cuts are bound to fail bound to fail now the strategy the present strategy what is going to work for upsc is you should have complete knowledge of the syllabus you cannot skip you cannot skip uh, economy you cannot skip a uh, polity you cannot skip history you cannot skip indian geography and world geography you cannot skip skip snt you cannot skip current affairs nothing can be skipped nothing can be skipped why because from all the areas on an average it is giving 15 questions i'll i'll hold one more session on prelims 2023 this year means how what exactly upsc expected from you with respect to a particular question where you people failed but for the time being upsc is expecting us to know everything indeed it is forcing us to read everything i am emphasizing it's a forcing aapko padhna chahiye aapko iska bare mein information hona chahiye we cannot make you you he collectors we don't want such collectors we want people who have, who have complete understanding holistic understanding that is anthropological approach that's why upsc is increasing the standard of the questions upsc is you people think that upsc is increasing the standard of the questions it's not like that upsc is asking the questions upsc is reframing the questions in a proper way in a refined way that's it is upsc deviating out of the syllabus no is it upsc asking about uh, the kya bolte use some ireland history ireland history russian culture russian art and architecture no it's about indian everything is about indian within the syllabus but upsc is expecting you people to read more UPSC is no longer interested to tolerate the people who look for shortest cut who study only for 2 months and 3 months or before the prelims or 1 month before the mains or the short cut approach what they follow UPSC wants you people to work hard round the year please do remember this UPSC is expecting the people of ORN or Mukherjee Nagar whatever it may be to work around the year sir how to crack upsc examination work around the year don't look for the shortest cuts for this kya karna hai kya karna hai kya karna bole to you have to micro manage the syllabus part because i have shown you all the questions are from the syllabus all the questions of the syllabus so can you guess what can be a question what cannot be a question is it possible for shortest cuts no maximum what can be possible is you read the syllabus completely finish anthropological finish anthropologically anthropology completely or history or whatever may be your optional other people's option you people are anthro 
psychology or political science etc 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 complete the syllabus have command over each and every aspect of the syllabus that is micro categorizing the syllabus having at least some understanding about each and every aspect of the syllabus then only things are going to work i have seen a uh, few videos upsc is harsh upsc is playing with the souls ideas etc it's not like that it's not like that upsc is simply expecting us expecting you people to work more to be a hard working right from the days of your preparation upsc expecting hard working people to get into ias so that they will strive their best they give their best in the development of the country that's the purpose of ups that is why they are changing the pattern so i'll hold one more session on preliminary examination frankly speaking upsc examination of 2023 is not that tough i'll hold one more session for this why it is not tough i'll explain all the 100 questions for you okay so for the time being this is the approach to anthropology so even for anthropology you categorize you micromanage the entire syllabus you micromanage the entire syllabus means all the aspects of the syllabus all the aspects of the syllabus you have to know about everything characteristics of primate evolutionary trend uh, pre pleistocene hominids astrocytes you should know erectus you should know neanderthal you should know classical type progressive type everything you should know everything you should know after that we will try to guess is saal kya puch sakte hai last year if they have asked astrocytes is saal kya puch sakte hai theek hai that is shortcut that is shortcut but shortest cut read this 30 page pdf aapka ho jayega read this 100 page pdf aapka ho jayega theek hai sir ha 100 page pad lenge ab maza karenge ja हंड्रेड पेज तो लास्ट एक महीने में कर सकते हैं दो महीने में कर सकते हैं नाउ हैव फन जस्ट बाय रीडिंग टू मंथ्स आई गेट इनटू आई ऐसा हो सकता है नो इफ यू आर इन यूपीएससी पोजीशन विल यू टॉलरेट दैट इफ यू आर इन यूपीएससी द पोजीशन ऑफ यूपीएससी विल यू टॉलरेट दैट व्हाट द पर्पस ऑफ एग्जाम इफ यू गो फॉर द शॉर्टेस्ट ऑफ द शॉर्टेस्ट देन यूपीएससी इज गिविंग इट्स ऑन स्टाइल दैट इज बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग whoever can so what has to be done now my dear aspirants means i am just asking you how you have to prepare from now at least from now because 2023 paper you have seen okay you were uh, you were uh, what is that fuse ud gaya exam paper mein hmm? ab kya karna hai at least from this year at least from june first yes yes cover the syllabus completely don't go for shortest cuts don't go for shortest cuts complete the syllabus you should have holistic understanding and months before examination few months before examination we can go for guessing matlab if at all if question is asked in for the past 2 years they were not not asked this year because in syllabus we have other dimensions likewise you can shortlist a few questions a few areas if at all a question arises from the uh, from the areas what we have not shortlisted also we should be a position to manage yes or no so that is how you people have to change your plan or else you people will be wasting your time and the resources my dear friends my humble request to all of you is don't look for the shortest cuts whoever is promising you such things they are just ruining your careers i am not a person i am a box of facts i am a man of rationality and objectivity theek hai it's finally it's up to you to decide i think you are mature enough to assess the positives and negatives of what people say okay all the best we shall meet once again for the 2023 paper discussion and the strategy adopted by the upsc and what you people um, should have done then in the examination hall post mortem something like a post mortem we can we shall conduct done